I want to create a little short video to help guide you on, on how to solve the, these type of problems. And um, first off, let's go to our calculator. And if we go to stat, and we go over to tests. These first ones are for hypothesis testing, so we skip over those. The, the intervals where we want to get to. And in, in this section, we're going to be dealing with two population, two samples. And there's three um, three main functions we look at: two samp z int, two samp t int, and two prop z int. Well, we're talking about the mean of uh, the differences, so that's one possibility. But first off, we're talking about confidence interval. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Not a... We're talking about confidence intervals. And we're specifically talking about two populations, two samples. And even more than that, we're really referring to the differences between them. Now we're going to have either mean or we're going to have proportion. Remember, there's other words for proportion like percentage. Now for mean, we're, we're only looking at the independent case here. The dependent case is covered later on. And um, if you're looking at mean, then the question is whether the sigmas are known. So sigmas are known or sigmas are not known. Now, sigmas are population standard deviation. So it may not actually say sigma, it may say um, population standard deviation. Well, sigma's known is when you use 2 samp z int. So this is 2 samp z int. Sigmas are not known is 2 samp t int. We're going to look at those functions here in a second. And then the proportion is our 2 prop z int. So that's going to be the flow chart you'll use when you're working with these. Now, um, if I look at um, 2 samp z int, There's two possibilities. One of them is where you're given summary statistics, where they give you uh, X bar and ends of both populations, both samples, and sigma is also I meant. Um, then data. If you left her over and choose enter on data, this is where you're given raw data. And you'll put um, one set of data into list one and another set of data into list two. You still need to put your sigmas there, you can see. And then once you go down there, you'll see that there's a calculate down at the bottom. And of course, there's sea level. Uh, that'll correspond if they tell you 95% confidence, you put in 0.95. Okay, let's look at 2 samp t int. So I'll do a stat, go over to tests. And I thought this might be faster to go up, but it doesn't look like it. Okay, 2 samp t int. You notice when you go here, you got data and stats again. If you choose data, you don't have to enter sigma. Because remember, you don't have sigma. Um, so that's why you don't have to enter it. But there is a pooled option. Under the 2SAMP two, two tint, the pooled option is if the population variances are the same, then you want to choose yes for pooled. Um, you'll probably never have that happen, or very rarely. Um, because usually you don't know the population variances. Maybe you might assume that they're... Um, that are equal. That would be about the best you could probably achieve um, in order terms of using this. Because if we know the population variance, we probably know everything. We don't actually need to, to perform a, a, a confidence interval to try to guess guess uh, what it's in. We will know what the mean is. Now, um, stats is if you're given summary statistics. And again, how you switch back and forth between those. We've seen this before, but if I put my uh, flashing cursor on stats and press enter, it'll change my prompts. 
Then if I go back to data, put my flashing cursor there and press enter, it'll change those prompts. Now from there, you'll come up with a confidence interval just like before. And the interpretation of it would be like uh, we're 95% confident that the, the true value of the differences between this, this uh, mean and this mean is in this range. Now yeah, the reading of these problems are very important. If it talks about finding the confidence interval, and I'll do so, I'll sh shorten this. I won't write all the words out, but between um, the mean of the red and the mean of the blue, you notice here, red is first and blue is second. Um, I should have put the difference here. Difference between red and blue. Since red is first, we put that in our first list if we're given raw data, so we put that in L1. Otherwise, those are our sub-1 values, like x, x bar sub-1 and, and so forth, n sub-1, or sigma sub-1. And blue is second, so that would be our second list if we're given raw data. You put that in L2, or that would be your x bar sub-2 or n sub-2 or sigma sub-2 if you have that. Now, on the other hand, if this is reversed, and it says find a confidence interval of the differences between the mean of the blue and the mean of the red. Well, blue is first here, so this all of a sudden becomes our first one. And um, then this one would be our second one. So you can't just uh, willy-nilly put the values anywhere. When I come here and it's asked me for list one and list two, it'll be based upon this order you see right here. So the reading of the problem is very important. Other than that, the calculator pretty well does the does the problems for you. But anyway, I want to create this short video. I do have this in other videos, but it's kind of embedded in in the hypothesis testing for two population and two samples. And um, I wanted to give you a, kind of an overview of how do you just look up the how do you do the confidence intervals on the calculator.